because Microsoft Excel skills required in a lot of jobs, companies are trying to evaluate candidates' skills by asking Excel questions on the interview and also by conducting pre-employment Excel assessment test. In this video, we will look at the latest top questions asked during Excel interview and assessment test to help you get prepared for the challenge. A lot of times you might be asked the question on how to import transactional data into Microsoft Excel. Excel provides multiple different ways to import data. But first, before importing the data, you need to understand the data itself and how it's structured. Let's look at the two simple data file provided in File Explorer. First file, sales.transactions.txt, is a simple text file. If we open this file in Notepad, we can see that it has a headers and it has multiple columns. And this file is tab delimited. There are a lot of different formats Excel supports for import. The most popular file formats are comma delimited and tab delimited formats. Other import formats include XML, HTML, and PDF. Tab delimited means that between the columns there is a tab symbol. So between, for example, Germany and EUR, there is only one tab. So when you push tab on the keyboard, you can replicate this symbol. The importance of delimiter or a separator is essential because you would need to pick the format of how the source file is structured when you're importing the data. Typically, tab delimited files have extension TXT, and typically comma delimited files have an extension CSV, which stands for comma separated values. To actually import transactional data into Excel, you need to click on the file and then click open and click browse to better understand where your files are located. And then you need to pick the right type of file. Here you can pick all the files or you can pick specifically text files. Once I pick text file, I can see those two files I just demonstrated a second ago. We have a file with the extension TXT, which is the tab delimited file. And if you click on this file, you can see the preview. I can also click on the CSV file, which is a comma delimited file, and I can see the preview of that file. In my case, both files are the same, but in your case, it might be different. I would like to give you one tip. You can impress the interviewer if you say that in addition to just solving the challenge technically, you can also ask the source to provide the data in a different format, which might be easier to import in Microsoft Excel. To actually import the files, you need to double click on the file and Excel will launch the text import wizard. In the wizard, Excel automatically senses the type of data that exists in the file, but Excel cannot determine if there are headers. So in our case, we have headers in the file, and headers represent the first row of data which describes headers in the file. We need to check my data has headers checkbox to account for headers. Once we do that, and we confirm that the file is delimited and not a fixed length file, which is in our case, this file is delimited, we click Next, and then we determine what type of delimiter is used. Excel predetermined that this is a tab delimiter, which is correctly, because now you see the line between the columns, and you see first row is uh, selected as a header row. And then we click Next again. Defining data types is an optional step. You do not necessarily have to do it. You can just click Finish and define it later in Excel. And this is what I am going to do. Once I clicked Finish, you see that Excel imported all the data. Now my goal is to better understand the data and expand the column so I can see all the data inside the file. <laughs> Very frequently, you might be asked to demonstrate your knowledge of conditional formatting in Excel. Keep in mind that questions might be asked specifically related to conditional formatting, or they also could be asked as a business question. For example, you might be asked to highlight all transactions with negative profit margins. To do this, you would use conditional formatting feature in Microsoft Excel. For example, the question might be, how can you quickly highlight all transactions with negative profit in Excel? To do that, you need to better understand the data. To better understand the data, you need to understand the columns and the meaning of each column in the source data. For example, the data we're looking at is the transactional data. 
and it represents sales transactions for a company. Each line item here represents specific transaction, and the column O represents the profit for each of these transactions. If we scroll down, we will see that most of the values are positive, but there are some negative values here, which we would need to highlight through conditional formatting feature of Microsoft Excel. To highlight all transactions with negative profit, we first need to select the data. Once data is selected, on the Home tab, there is a conditional formatting feature, and in our case, we will be highlighting the cells, and we'll be highlighting cells with the values less than specific amount. Our specific amount is zero. By default, Excel calculated something else. So once I replace that value with zero, and then choose the type of color, I think light red fill with dark red text is a very good choice to highlight negative amounts. So we will use the default choice here, but there are other choices you should keep it in mind. Sometimes question might ask to use specific color, and then click OK. It seems that nothing happened on the screen, but on the first page there are no transactions. But if we scroll down, then we see the transactions uh, with the negative amount have been highlighted with the red. We can also, to emphasize this, that these are dollar amounts or amounts in other currency, we can select the column and then use the dollar sign to make it clear that this is a negative profit. Very often, you might be asked to remove duplicates in Excel. Keep in mind that there are many variations of this question you might encounter. For example, you might be asked to remove blank rows, or you might be asked to use specific feature of Excel to remove duplicates. For example, you might be asked to use Power Query to remove duplicates and remove blank rows. To remove duplicates in Excel, you need to highlight all the rows in the target range. And then one of the easiest ways to navigate to the Data tab, and then there is a Remove Duplicates button here. When you click Remove Duplicates button, Excel looks at all the columns that's available in the range and provides you with the header information. So you need to understand your target data, and you need to understand how duplicates could occur. In my case, let's take a look at the range first to see what kind of duplicates we might encounter. Typically, transaction ID in any data provides unique value that should not be duplicated. So if we're looking for particular duplicates, it would be good to check if transaction ID has any duplicates. So how can we do it? One of the best tools to use is conditional formatting in the Home tab. To use it, you need to highlight all the columns and click conditional formatting. Conditional formatting allows you to highlight duplicate values. So if we select highlight duplicate values, and click OK, you will see that we have couple duplicate values in transaction ID. And if we scroll, we might encounter even more. As you can see, I have found two duplicate rows with transaction ID, which is the same value, in the rows 306 and 307. What's interesting, though, as I scroll, I realize that some of the rows are blank, and we're not accounting for blank rows. We will come back to blanks, but for now, let's undo conditional formatting by using Undo button. And then let's go back and remove duplicates. To remove duplicates through the Data tab, you need to highlight all the data, which I did already, navigate to the data, and click Remove Duplicates. Now I need to unselect all the columns and only select Transaction ID, and click OK. Excel indicated that it removed five duplicate values out of 702. Now let's look at the blank values, because sometimes you might be asked how to remove blank values. You see that blank values are still here, and there are different types of blank values. For example, we have the entire row, which might be blank, or we have a row that's populated with the data, but does not have transaction ID. This leads us to another opportunity how you can remove duplicates in Excel, which is using Power Query and using Excel tables. So first, to remove duplicates in this way, you need to convert all the data into Excel table. To convert data into Excel table, you, we need to highlight the entire range and then click Control T or use Insert Table combination. Sometimes you can just scroll if you have a small data set and then you will find the end cell for the range. But a lot of times you might be presented as part of interview or assessment test with the large data set. Excel allows you to identify bottom right corner of a data range set. To do that, you need to uh, use keyboard shortcut Control shift end on the keyboard, and then Excel automatically highlights the entire range. Once it's highlighted, you can use Control t shortcut to convert it to a table, or on the ribbon, use Insert Table. 
Excel prompts you if your table has headers, which in our case it does, and then we click OK. After conversion is complete, this brings us another possibility of removing duplicates. You see, we are in the Table Design ribbon tab right now, so all operations specific to the table are listed in this tab. So what we can do, we can put the cursor into any cells inside the table and click Remove Duplicates. So once we do that and select doing this very similar way as we did with the uh, previous way of doing it was just for the range, Excel will be able to remove duplicates. I'm not going to do it for the purposes of this uh, video. To remove duplicates, let's uh, select any cell, click Remove Duplicates, unselect everything, then select Transaction ID, and after that click OK. And you see that Excel found nine duplicate values and identify 702 unique values. This method also did not remove blank rows. If we scroll, we see that the blank rows are still here. Now let's look at another way of removing duplicates, which is using Power Query. Power Query can use as a source data, either table or range. And as you can see, I have two different tabs here, so we can use either one. It works very similar. Let's use table with Power Query. To do that, we need to select any cell on the table, and then we need to know what the table name is. We only have one table of the spreadsheet, which is Table 1. To identify table name, you need to go into Table Design tab once table is selected and understand the name. Now let's use Power Query to process the data. To do that, let's navigate to the Data tab, and here you have Import Data, Get and Transform Data section in the ribbon and we need to use from table or range. Once you click on this, it launches Power Query. If you're not familiar with Power Query, this is the tool that was designed to help you process complex data. It allows for very sophisticated manipulations with the data. What happened now, we see the content of our table or range, depending what you will choose, being populated here in the Power Query and ready for analysis and also for processing. The way Power Query works, it applies the steps to the transformed data, and then it allows you to get a new data set based on the transformation. So for example, we have two steps right now. First step is source. This is when we identify that our table will be used in Power Query. Second step is change data type. This is something that Power Query identified by itself, because I did not select this step. You see the X mark, which means that you can remove this step if you want to, but you cannot remove the source, which will basically erase the first step. So source always remains there in applied steps. Let's go back to our original goal, and our goal was to remove duplicates and also remove blanks. This is how we will do it in Power Query. As part of transformation, Power Query allows you to do different actions with the data. For example, you can remove columns, you can keep rows, and you can remove rows. In our case, we need to focus on removing rows because this is what it means to remove the duplicates. If we click on Remove Rows, we have multiple options. One option is Remove Top Rows, Bottom Rows, or Alternative Row, which is not what we're looking for, but we should be focusing on removing duplicates and then removing blank rows. To accomplish what we're trying to do, we need to do two steps and two processing operations. In the first one, we will click Remove Rows and click Remove Duplicates. And you see that uh, Power Query added an additional step called Remove Duplicates. In the second step, we will do the same thing, but we'll remove blank rows. Now our processing is done, and we can close Power Query and load the process data into the new tab in Microsoft Excel. To do that, let's click Close and Load. And you see that Excel created a new sheet, which is called Sheet 5 right now, which has all process data from the Power Query. Sometimes you might be asked how to sort and filter data in Excel. Since data in Excel could be stored as table or as range, we will look at the both options and how to sort and filter it using both options in Microsoft Excel. Data could be sorted and filtered in Excel based on how it is stored in Microsoft Excel. Since data could be stored as a range or as a table, it will be processed differently. For example, to sort and filter data stored in the range, all you need to do is select the top row, assuming that you will have headers for the data range in the first row. And then all you need to do is click Sort and Filter and then Add a Filter. Once you edit a filter, you will have different options of how you would want to process the data. For example, what you can do, you can uh, select Sort A to Z, Sort Z to A, Sort by Color, 
uh, and use a lot of different sorting and filtering options. You can apply this uh, algorithm to any column as long as it has the header and as long as it has this drop down which is automatically added once you add a quick filter. If your data is stored as Excel table, which could be verified when you click on any cell, and if you see table design tab added, then it means your data is stored as a table. And typically you can navigate here and see the table name in this tab. When data is stored as a table, you automatically have the drop down boxes for sorting and filtering added. And you can just use them inside Excel table to process the data and to do sorting and filtering. And now let's look at the very typical question you might get as part of the interview. What are the differences between Microsoft Excel 2019, Excel 365, and Excel Online? Microsoft Excel 2019 is an electronic spreadsheet program installed on your computer. When you buy Excel 2019, you pay one-time license fee and you own the software. Excel 365 comes as part of Office 365 subscription. You pay monthly fee for subscription and you get software as a service package. With all the latest updates and cool new features Microsoft releases regularly. One of the big benefits of Office 365 subscription is that as long as you pay subscription fee, you will always have access to the latest features of Microsoft Excel. Excel Online is used in the web browser to create, view, and edit Excel workbooks. To store Excel documents, you can use OneDrive or you can use more sophisticated subscriptions used by the businesses. After you've created your online workbook, you can share it with a specific group of people or make it public. People can view and access your workbook they can edit, sort, and filter data and drill into details of pivot tables and web mobile features. Excel Online is not as sophisticated as desktop version of Microsoft Excel and typically has less features that's available in the desktop applications. Thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something and if this video made you smile, it means I did something right. I wanted to share with you that I've been unemployed myself many times in my career and know how stressful it is to look for a job. One of the most helpful things for me was maintaining positive outlook on things. I wanted to give you a boost of energy in your journey of job search and getting ready for the interview and assessment test. If you like this content, please give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends and consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.